Hey guys, what's going on? Today I got these little notifications in my car saying that I basically have to rotate my tires and change the air filters and the oil. I wanted to kind of show the steps that I go through in order to do this service on my own car so that I don't have to bring it to a dealership and then have them mess it all up. I brought my car in and they didn't tighten things down all the way. Like for example, I, I brought in my car to get an oil change once and I had the mechanic call me and tell me that I also needed my spark plugs changed. And I was like, well, just leave them alone. I can do those myself. You know, don't worry about them. After a couple of nights, um, I was driving my car and my spark plug shot out of the engine and bounced around in my engine bay and flew out the back of my car while I was driving on the highway. And my car, of course, started sputtering really bad, so I pulled over to the side of the road to check what was going on. When I opened up the hood, I noticed that my spark plug was missing. So I think what had happened is he either tightened it down on an angle and cross-threaded it and messed it up, or, or he just didn't tighten it down all the way. What ended up happening was I went to the store and I got another spark plug to go put it in, and it never went back in that hole correctly. Like I always had to kind of like put it on weird angles to try to get it in there. So he definitely stripped the threads in there in one way or another, or you know, when it popped out, it must have stripped the threads. I don't really know. The point is that it ended up messing up my car. This was like just a frustration, and I've dealt with issues like that more than once. The first thing that comes to mind for most people is that maybe they were upset and they decided, hey, I'm just gonna like leave this half put in, and then they'll have to come back when something happens or when it pops out or whatever. So uh, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Now, I would like to think people are better than that and that they're not gonna put your life at risk by doing something stupid like that. Maybe it was just a coincidence that they messed up or they weren't paying attention because they had too much going on that day, but it's always kind of freaked me out. So I, so once I started having all those experiences, I just decided, let me take the time to learn how to do some of this stuff myself so I don't have to go spend a bunch of money at a dealership or a mechanic shop to do these simple things that I can do myself. Now, the air filters, they're super easy to change. So there's no reason why anybody shouldn't be able to do that themselves or even at least just check it. Just If you have an old car, just open up the air filter just to check whether or not it's messed up and I'll show you what's what can be wrong with it. And then the same thing with the cabin filter inside the vehicle, it's pretty easy to change and, and do. So you can do that yourself. The oil is a little bit harder because you need specific tools to be able to fully do the oil. They're not really that expensive and once you have the tools, you can do your own oil change for the rest of the life of that car. I'll talk about the whole thing with the oil change too a little bit later, but the last thing I also wanted to do a video about was doing the tire rotation. My car says that I have to rotate my tires because it's got a sensor on there after you drive a certain amount of miles. I guess it just reminds you that you need to rotate them. All that takes is being able to lift your car up and to get your tires off and then you can just switch them and then you bolt them back on. It's really not that difficult to do. I guess I'll just videotape some of this stuff, uh, show you guys the way I do it, and I'll tell you guys about the oil stuff later. So here I'm pulling out the air filter from my car, simply removing these latches on the air box under my hood. In newer cars, you usually see these types of filter boxes, but they may also look like these. Once I pull out the filter, you can see here that there's some dirt, but it was actually kind of worse in the morning. Before I filmed this, I pulled it out originally just to kind of see how bad it was, and I shook off all of the leaves and the debris that were stuck on the filter. I didn't want to drive around knowing how dirty the filter was. You can basically head over to your auto parts store and ask them for a new filter. They can look up the type of vehicle you have and it's as simple as just putting the new filter back in. Usually you should compare the two and just make sure that they match up, but I already know what mine looks like so I'm going to go ahead and just replace it. If you need to also change out your cabin filter, usually they're behind the glove box, so you'll just have to pull open the glove box and there's these little rails on the side. And once you pull those past the plastic there, you can have better access to the filter. In my car, there's this little panel over my filter. And as I pull it out here, you can see how dirty this filter actually was. This one is basically for the air conditioner inside the car.
To put it back, there's like this little arrow on the side that shows which way the air flows. So try to remember when you pull the old one out, which way that the arrow is pointing. It can usually only go in one direction. So if you put it in the wrong way, it just won't fit properly. And here are some of the tools that you need to do an oil change. The oil catcher is a must, but you can also use a large container, preferably something that you can transfer the oil around in later. I have my power drill to make removing some screws easier, but you can use a handheld screwdriver too. It'll just take you a little bit longer. There's also one of these tools to remove the oil filter. They make different types. This one kind of sucks, but it'll work for now. And here's the oil filter. Make sure if you remove it from the box, you don't get a bunch of debris inside of it. I also brought out some ratchets and my wrench to remove the oil bolt. Usually I only need one of these tools to remove it, but I forgot exactly which one worked the best for my car. So I just kind of brought out all of them. I changed my car over to synthetics. So I got the necessary equivalent oil for my car. I also have a jack and a couple of jack stands to hold my car up so I can get underneath it. But if you have a larger vehicle, like a truck or an SUV or something, you can probably just fit under it without having to lift the vehicle up. The ground was pretty wet from the recent snow and rain that we've been getting, so I grabbed a couple pieces of wood to protect me from getting a bunch of mud all over myself. I then tried to find the best spot to lift my car up with this jack, but because of the rain, it kept sinking in and making it really difficult for me to properly get the jack stands under the car once I lift it up. But I found this area in front of the vehicle where I can just lift it safely and high enough to fit my jack under the right part of the car. On mine, there's a metal bracket where you can put the jack stands, but if you put it on the wrong spot, there's actually a lip of metal that will bend. So you have to make sure that you're lifting your car in the right place. Once you take a look under your car, you should be able to easily notice the spots where it can be properly supported. Just make sure to look for the frame or something with sturdy metal on it that won't bend or get ruined with the weight of your car. Once you get one side up and secure, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. When both sides are up, I always push on the car a bunch of times just to make sure that it's not going to fall off the jack or shift in any kind of way while I'm underneath the vehicle. Once I'm comfortable with how sturdy it is, I go underneath and I usually check out what's going on. This is a good opportunity to just do a quick inspection on how everything looks underneath your car. It's always good to double check anything else you can see while you're there before you get started. My car happens to have a metal cover under the oil pan, but first I have to remove that with my trusty power drill. It's about four to five screws and then the metal panel can be easily removed. Once that's done, this would be a good time to slide under your oil catcher and begin to loosen the oil drain bolt. On some cars, you'll even see the text with an arrow guiding you to the correct drain bolt, but if you're not sure where yours is located, you can do a quick Google search online. Now, before you drain it, if you were recently driving the car somewhere, just let it sit for a few to cool down a bit, or you'll have hot oil coming out while you're draining it. While you're under there, you should also be able to spot your oil filter.
Once most of the oil is drained from the vehicle, you can put the oil bolt back on. Usually it's recommended that you replace it with a new gasket, but I usually only do this on my car if I see that it's beginning to get damaged in some way to where it will affect its ability to hold the oil in. I usually reuse mine, but after a couple oil changes, I usually replace it. They're fairly cheap, so it's really not that expensive if you want to just switch it out with a new one and be safe. Don't tighten the bolt on too tight either. You don't need to pretend you're the Hulk here. Just use a little bit of force and make sure it's not going to come loose while you're driving, but you don't have to over tighten it. You can cause more problems doing that, so just make sure it's snug. Oh, and clean up any mess you've made, you filthy animal. After attending to your recent oil spill disaster, go ahead and move the oil catcher down under the filter and begin to remove that. Usually you can just loosen it by hand, but if you have any trouble loosening it because, you know, you're a weakling like me, then just use the oil filter tool to break it loose and then you should be able to fully remove it. Then go make yourself a cup of hot cocoa or something while you let the oil drain from there. Alright, now make sure to clean off any old dirt and oil that might be on there before putting the new filter back on. This will ensure that you have the best seal and you shouldn't have any oil leaks from there. Just be careful not to use anything too abrasive that may scratch the metal and gouge it enough for oil to sneak past the seal. Just use like a towel or paper towel or something like that, that should be fine. Once it's all cleaned up, we'll get ready to put the new one on. I usually finger the oil container and put some new oil on the rubber seal before putting the filter back on. This will usually keep the rubber lasting longer and can create a better seal. I've never really changed my oil and not done this, so it's just kind of become a force of habit for me and at this point it just gives me peace of mind. If your car has an upside down filter like mine, you can also pour in a little bit of oil into the filter before screwing it in if you want to. This way it already has some oil and it's kind of pre-lubricated for when you start your car back up. If your filter faces another direction, you don't need to do this so it's not pouring all over your stupid face while you're trying to put it back on. You don't need to tighten this really tight, unlike your mom, so just use your hands to hand tighten it so it's snug. Too much can ruin the rubber seal and cause it to leak. I then realized that there was a couple of these plastic fasteners that came loose, so I punched them back into place while I was down there. Now let's get ready to fill the car up with new oil. On most newer vehicles, you'll see that the oil cap actually shows what kind of oil you can put into it. If yours doesn't, you can always check the manual for the car or just Google it and you should easily be able to find how much oil and what kind to use. My car is a 2012 Honda Civic LX, so when I looked that up, it pretty much says that I need to put in 3.9 quarts of 0W20 oil. Instead of using the regular oil, I switched out mine to synthetic. If you're interested in me doing a video about the different oils and why I chose to switch mine to synthetic, just let me know in the comments below and I'll put that on the to-do list. The side of the oil container will show you how many quarts are in there, so in mine I'll just have to use up to almost 4 quarts and that means I'll have about a quart left over since it's a 5 quart bottle. To make this easier on yourself, go ahead and grab a funnel to pour the oil in without accidentally spilling it all over your engine. If you don't have one, you can just roll up like a piece of paper or cardboard. As long as it's clean, you can use that as a funnel. I've also poured in my oil very carefully without a funnel and I did just fine, but we all know that you're a hot mess, so just use a funnel, okay? Once I'm done pouring in the recommended amount, I usually start my car and make sure that I'm not getting any warning lights on the dash about the oil. If everything's okay and you don't see any lights, just look underneath your car and make sure whether or not you have any leaks and everything looks okay, go ahead and put everything back together.
Then I put my car back down on somewhat level ground, and then I check the oil levels just using the dipstick. If you can't really see the oil in it, just wipe it down using an old towel or paper towel, and then put it back in the car and pull it back out, and you'll be able to see where the oil's currently sitting. If it's below the bottom line, you'll need to add a little bit more. You basically want it right under that top line. Anywhere in between the two lines is usually okay, but I prefer to fill mine just like right below that top line. If you put in a little bit too much and it's just barely above that top line, it's not a big deal. Don't freak out about it. You just basically don't want to be throwing in like an extra quarter too, because then you're going to have some issues. Once you're done with everything, now it's time to clean up that mess you made. And if you need to dispose of your old oil, just bring it back to the auto parts store. They'll usually recycle it for you. My car actually has this reminder for the maintenance. So while I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and reset the the air filters that I just changed out, and the oil. Holy crap, I just noticed how dirty this car was. This is actually from me taking Luna all over the place, her first gotten all over my car. So I guess the next video I'm gonna have to make about my car is how to clean it from top to bottom. Oh look, I'm rich, bitch. The power of Christ compels this dirt in my car. Okay. I'll stop playing around. The last thing my car was yelling at me about was to rotate my tires. This is fairly simple to do, so I'll be quick about this one. I basically just loosen the bolts a little on both tires on the driver's side of the car. Then I lift up my car on that same side and I just make sure it's all secure by pushing on it like I showed you before. All it takes from there is just pulling both tires off and switching them. You want to keep an eye on the treads of your tires and make sure that you're not putting tires that are completely bald on the back of a front wheel drive car, especially if you're in an area where there's lots of wet or frozen weather. That way you're not fishtailing around corners. This is also a good time to check out your tires for any damage. You can also take a look make sure there's no nails stuck in there or anything like that. If your tires have bad tread on them, go get new ones, even if you have to go buy some used ones. Sometimes that's better than having them completely bald. Since my tires are off, I also went ahead and cleaned up the insides of the tires and the wheel wells just to keep my parts from rusting and getting ruined due to corrosion over time. I happen to have this old impact wrench from Harbor Freight that I bought, so I'm gonna use it to bolt back on my tires, but you can basically use your ratchet and just put a little bit of force when you're tightening it. Don't overdo it too much. I've had a nightmare incident in the past where I've actually over tightened a bolt and it was rusty and old, so it ended up breaking on me and it was really difficult to get the new ones in. So try not to over tighten them. Once you're done with one side, you can pretty much just do the same on the other and we're done. Thanks for watching this video and please hit the like button and leave me a comment letting me know if you enjoyed this quick tutorial. I've been wanting to do more how-to videos like this so any feedback is highly appreciated. See you guys on the next one.